What is going on guys? Welcome back to Rep361 Texas. Today's video is gonna be the most important mod for your performance vehicle. It really is any vehicle that you're doing performance stuff to. Uh, and I know with all this EPA BS, it uh, also plays into that at the same time. So without further ado, let's hop off into it. All right guys, so before we get started, uh, just a little update on City Sancho, still my daily. Uh, nothing really new with it, honestly, other than I ran through some white paint yesterday and uh, it coated the inside. Pretty custom white paint job there. Matches the body pretty well. I probably should have made a few passes back through it to get some of those rock chips out of the paint, cover some of that up. But uh, yeah, there was a paint bucket on the side of the road. I gotta do the oil change on this thing today. So I'm gonna knock that out uh, probably in the course of doing this video. So at some point, I'm probably gonna get really sweaty. It's a little windy out here, but it's hot as hell. The Ram is the Ram. There's nothing really done to it. Of course, it's actually been parked in storage. I'm only pulling it out so I can do the oil change on Sancho. And then Little Blue is still back there until I find a good day that I wanna pull the motor out. I wanna be able to pull the engine on that guy without, uh, really being in a rush uh like when i did the cam swap and i did uh nothing to this guy but when i worked on this guy that one time that y'all didn't really see whenever i did all that uh i did it all in a rush and this one's not one to rush on this truck is show worthy it is super clean super straight and uh it's done right it just needs love is all anyway without further ado we'll hop off into the video i'll, I'll quit rambling and uh, we'll talk about the single most important mod first the most important mod that you should do to any performance vehicle, especially if you're just an owner and not a tuner, is a wideband AFR. This is a cheaper one off of Amazon, 130 bucks. I will say the veterans out there, probably not gonna like just the basic AM wideband. I don't know. It's a great wideband just to keep an eye on things. But let me tell you why uh, wideband is, is, is important as hell it doesn't matter if you're tuned or not you need to know where your afrs are you need to know how much fuel and you're getting and you're not getting whenever you're running at wide open throttle otherwise you end up like this okay so if your afrs aren't right it's not always going to be just the massive explosions like you just seen or anything like that. It could just be um, little subtle things start happening like your engine starts overheating or you start seeing smoke whenever you're at wide open throttle or you know, uh, if you're on nitrous, you may get the explosion. That's how a lot of people blow things up on nitrous and uh, that's part of the reason why the Ram's been through I don't know. I think nearly 80 bottles of nitrous. Y'all can count. I don't know. It's. It, I've been. I've been through a lot of nitrous on the Ram, and I don't have any issues with it. Doesn't tick. Doesn't knock. It fires up every time. No smoke. In fact, while we're sitting here talking about it, let's go ahead and do a good little cold start on this guy. Here we go. We're gonna go to the exhaust. That truck has uh, 85,000 miles on it, 80 bottles of nitrous. It's been tuned since like 15,000 miles. I've taken it to the track. It's been raced hard, put up wet. And if you maintain your AFRs and your maintenance, of course, it's not just AFRs, but AFRs play a big role into the longevity of your engine and uh, your vehicle. Or it doesn't have to be on a truck. It could be on a car. It could be on a boat, honestly. You just need to know what AFRs that thing is happy at running at wide open throttle. Uh, a lot of stuff is around the 12.5, 12.7 range, but really look at, do your homework on that, what number you're expecting to see, and install your AFR properly. Make sure you install it as per the manufacturer recommendations or as per um, general standards for that application and before tuning, if you ask me, because uh, even when you do an air filter swap, stuff like that, there may be other parameters you're not seeing the effect your computer isn't looking at, and it could be adjusting and compensating for atmosphere versus new uh, muffler versus new intake, you know, whatever it may be. And it may be on the lean side or it may be on the rich side. If you're running rich, it's not good either. In fact, I'll show you an update later in this video. Um, but if you go back to the Tahoe video, 
the oil pan was completely full of fuel. That was because it was running so rich that it was fouling the plugs. The fuel was seeping through the piston rings and getting down into the oil pan. That in turn will wash out the main bearings on an engine. You're gonna have rod knock. You're gonna spin a main bearing because it's gonna it's gonna thin that fuel out to where it allows the bearings and everything to get hot. So there's a little bit more in depth as to why it's important, I will say, if you're out there running your vehicle hard, putting it up wet, or if you're just that guy that can't leave a red light without somebody trying to race you, I would put an AFR in. It's kept my vehicles alive for a very long time. Thousands of dollars you could save by just installing one of these little guys. So anyway, I'm gonna get this guy thrown in. Not gonna give you a how-to because every brand is different. Every application is different, just depends. This is gonna be fairly simple. So that's what I'm running with on this guy. I just want something, it doesn't have to be extremely accurate, but as long as I make sure that I'm not outside safe parameters, that's all I really need for this guy. So anyway, that's your tip of the day. I'm gonna get off into it. Y'all can watch me if y'all want. If not, you can skip ahead to the Tahoe stuff and the rest of the video. I'm gonna get the oil changed on this guy. I'm gonna do a little update on the Tahoe part out and uh, then we'll probably wrap it up. Come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up just so they could see me. Did what I had to do just to feed me. And what was left over, I put towards my dreaming. But the only thing in life that has meaning are the things you gotta work for, believe me. Take into your hands a plan Your own hands can land your own brand And damn, I feel like no one takes accountability They want the credibility Convincingly unwilling to put in the f hours It takes to get some power Don't be f***ing sour Take a cold shower Scream until you're louder Work until you're prouder And f*** all the doubters They're just your downers I swear to God they all let me down I always fought just to wear the crown I'm off at these f***ing clouds Who were all taught they deserve it now It's only worth it if you work for it It's only worth it All right, so the oil's changed on Sancho. My shirt's officially sweaty. Glasses are all messed up, fogged up. Y'all didn't notice I'm wearing glasses now, not contacts this time. Got everything we need loaded up in the back of Sancho to pull the motor out of the Tahoe. So we're headed there next. Don't worry about that little guy. That little guy. Oh, don't worry about that little guy. Anyway, next stop, La Casa. All right, so we made it back to the house sitting here in front of uh, Terry. I'm gonna call it Terry the Tahoe. Terry the Tahoe is about ready to get his guts pulled out from inside of him because I got everything unbolted from the engine except for the engine mounts, transmission, a couple of radiator hoses. I was waiting until I got back from storage with that uh, catch pan and some of these buckets before I pulled the hoses. Of course, we got pets in the yard and I don't want to get it all over the ground. So anyway, if you didn't see my last video, I was parting it out. Um, it's pretty much parted out at this point. Uh, interior is practically all gone as far as what's good worthy of selling got a center console there but it's not in the greatest shape uh, other than that this thing is gutted I got some of the good parts back here that are still worthy of being bought and uh, it's getting pretty close to this thing going to the salvage yard got a roof rack but on the other side it's a little messed up uh, all the glass I'm probably gonna pull I'm actually probably gonna pull all the doors off of it before I scrap it because somebody will need one of these doors one day I'd probably take like 50 bucks a piece for them or something I mean I've pretty much already made my money back on this thing I gave $500 for his Tahoe parted out all the bumpers and everything's gone parted it parted it out and made my money back so once I scrap it I'll get my money back out of scrap metal and uh that'll be a done deal so i'll actually come out on top and a little bit of money to uh build a motor for the camaro which is sitting over here not looking too beautiful but it will be down the road just give it time so yeah in the next video i'll probably be tearing this engine down and showing you more or less what was going on with it i have no idea so y'all are gonna see with me but uh i have a pretty good hint that they had a flooding issue with the fuel because the oil level is extremely high and extremely thin and smells like straight gasoline so uh, yeah in an AFR gauge scenario had you had an AFR gauge on this thing which this is a bone stock truck there was obviously a check engine light on telling them that something was wrong with it um, anyway yeah I can't put this damn dipstick back in the hole with one hand while holding it oh I got it 
got it. All right, so I was gonna end the video off and I know I look probably like hell since the last time you saw me, but engine, transmission, and drive shaft almost came out all together at the same time, mainly because the transmission wasn't really bolted to much to begin with. Um, engine so i got a few things i really want to go over here the starter now this was a running driving vehicle when it was left but check this out so that stud right there yeah that that's not yeah what wait what huh what wait what look at this the whole starter Starting with this nut and this stud here and this eye, loose. Then you get to the, the solenoid. The solenoid itself has got slack in the body of the solenoid. I don't know if you can see it moving there. And then like the solenoid to the starter has got slack. The starter to the fucking block has got slack. Okay, so they did some welding here to do some. I don't, I don't have a clue. I do not, I guess they stripped the threads and thought they could weld the bolt. They ain't got no bolts in it. I know what's wrong with it. They ain't got the right fucking starter all together, actually. And then we come around to this side. Okay, cool. We have a bolt and stud here. What's what's there? Nothing. Nothing's there. This is notched for some reason. They notched the transmission, which is great because this is fucking like almost brand new transmission. But they notched. I don't know why they cut all that shit off, I guess. I don't know. I guess I could get up there and put all those fucking boogers on there. You get to this side. Look at this. It would have taken me no time to pull this transmission out because I was, I was, you know, dreading having to deal with the harness and all the bolts in the firewall area. Yeah, no, they were never installed. So that's great. That one stud is the only thing holding this entire transmission onto this engine. I don't know if maybe they had the transmission put in didn't get that far with it and gave up on it afterwards. So now I'm kind of worried about the engine because it's like, it it looks pretty low mileage. I, I popped the valve covers off and stuff. It doesn't look bad on the inside. I mean, yeah, it looks like it's got some wear and tear, but that's what you want in an LS. You want it well seasoned. It's like a cast iron skillet. Uh, but <laughs> I just don't know. With seeing how they rig stuff like that, transmission cooler has fuel lines on it. Um, it's all right because it's not my problem it really isn't i'm gonna be tearing this thing down anyway but wow butt splice is down in there this wire is look at this isn't that beautiful do you see this though you know where that goes it's a stainless steel bend it goes through the hole on the block that's what's holding the fucking starter on and then i don't know what this shit is this is wow dude Look at this. <laughs> For racing applications only, because he didn't have a good ground, I guess he probably clamped this and like grounded it to the, Jesus Christ. Just, it's awesome. I don't know where they got that decent looking transmission, but now I don't think it's so de decent. That may make you fast, but that's not how I'm trying to be fast. Speed uh, and then speed. There's two different types of speeds and this guy was on type B. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed the video. Wanted to throw this in at the end because that was nuts. And uh, yeah, 